Welcome back, friends. You are watching Tactical Enlightenment, featuring our 300 series. All of these episodes that feature our small but powerful force of war veterans face off against foes in a wide variety of scenarios and in ever increasingly more difficult situations. All right, friends, welcome back again to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment's 300 Challenge Series. We continue to roam the map looking for challenges for our uh, small but ferocious force here. Um, we don't quite have 300 guys. I'm trying to acquire some troops, even if they're low level here. Uh, but of course, I don't have any territory at this stage of the map. And so we're just kind of raiding villages and trying to upgrade guys as we go here. Um, you can see we've got 50 injuries as well kind of upgrading troops as I go here and sort of narrating on the fly. I'm, I'm filming these in the same way that I that filmed the freestyle series. That's to say uh, that I'm sort of narrating permanently now while I, while I play the game. Uh, anyways, we are in the Southern Empire. Uh, we are looking for a fight down here uh, and we have our elite force of 287 guys. And this will, this will more than do. Now, I'd love to get both of these armies in this battle here, so I, I might I might see if I can't encourage these two units to attack. This army definitely seems pissed off at me for raiding their villages, but this other guy doesn't seem interested in partaking. Uh, the other component of this series that we've added in difficulty is we are using a mod. Uh, I think it's just called Bigger Army Size or something like that. It basically allows for 2,000 total units to be on the field at the same time. Uh, it wasn't, I wasn't having uh, extreme difficulty with, with the with the, the standard vanilla banner lord, which is 750 versus 250, right? We were outnumbered three to one. Uh, with this mod, you gotta be careful how close I get here. This is perfect. They're, they're trying to corner me now. I think that'll work. Come on, engage. All right, we got the big army in there. With this mod though, uh, of course we're playing with normal player damage. Uh, we, we want it to be as difficult as possible because of this this group I have, if you're new to the series, is very high-level companions and then a mostly hand-picked army. Although I will say this army for this battle uh, is kind of suboptimal. Uh, we have some, literally some recruits, some guys with bathrobes. So this is not the strongest army we've ever had. Uh, but you see the size of their army out there. That's a huge army. Uh, it might be 1,500 men, it might be 1,300, something like that. I will probably do a status check just to see how large it is at some point. It's kind of a picturesque battlefield. We got a sunrise here, a sunset. There's a giant keep in the background. Uh, but what I want for this battlefield is this water. I've been wandering this area, trying to pick fights. I even sieged and took a castle down here uh, because I want to be able to tactically play with water. Uh, I think water and, and, and the hills in this battlefield presents some of the most interesting tactical opportunities, right? You can slow down your opponent, you can channel them, uh, and then you can lay waste to your opponent. So tinkering with my units here, the fourth core, that's crossbowmen. The sixth core here, these are skirmishers. I typically use them uh, in an offensive aggressive mode here, so we're going to give them a faster banner bearer. That way they can move quicker. The first infantry is uh, sort of standard shock troops. Uh, they're sort of my, my standard heavy infantry. We have all elite troops, right? At this stage of the campaign, um, and what I mean is elite captains. We have all, uh, you know, very high level captains. So I can kind of pick from a bunch of different elite potential captains. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the banners these guys are carrying. So you see this water over here. I plan on kiting the enemy and I plan on basically trying to attack them, getting them to come into the water against us. Uh, and then ambushing, attacking them when they're vulnerable in the water. Of course, we've got a lot of, uh, of units with ranged, ranged attacks. We've got a lot of Batanian Fiend Champs. We've got a good amount of crossbow. And then we have those elite skirmishers I mentioned. Uh, the elite Eighth Corps that I just passed there, uh, those are the rest of my, my companions. Uh, but don't overlook them too. A lot of those guys have 330 riding skill, elite armor, and then 300 weapon skill, right? So these guys are basically like the nastiest banner knights you've ever faced. Um, and right away, we're gonna retreat here. 
I want to get across the river. See, the enemy's over here. What I want to try to do is get across this river. I don't like retreating on the fly like this. That's very suboptimal. They they actually have a lot of horse archers here. So we're going to try to work on these guys a little bit. The rest of their army is behind. So we're going to prioritize the horse archers in this battle. This has happened a lot lately. Uh, in my campaign, of course, at this stage, very old campaign. I get my ass kicked in here. Sometimes when you fly in, that's exactly what happens. Uh, but I, I fly in here with my javelin, or with my pole arm to do some major damage. Try to disperse these guys a little bit. When they're holding bows, these guys are just easy pickings, right? Uh, but mostly what I want to do here is buy time for our troops. Kill this noble. Uh, buy time for our troops while they retreat. Now I have a couple cav units here in, in shield wall. Those guys' job is basically just to absorb some arrows, sort of get in the way of the enemy, distract the enemy, deter the enemy from from chasing our, our units here. Uh, and mission mostly accomplished. Uh, I did take a beating there. That's that's way more health than I wanted to lose at this stage of the battle. Uh, but but that's what happens sometimes when you're facing a force like this. What was it? It was it was uh, over 2,000, right? So we have 300. <laughs> They have 2,000. And of course, we are emulating the Spartans here, just sort of banner, -like, banner lord style. Uh, you know, we have archers, different kind of things because they didn't have that in the Spartan era. Um, but we're, we're sort of pretending that this late game campaign army of mine uh, is the Spartans and trying to beat back the hordes here. And this is true hordes, right? This is, uh, you know, for sure a thousand plus. Uh, troops that we're fighting. You will not see an army this large in normal Banner Lord. So we continue to kite. What I really want to do, besides of course killing these horse archers, is try to get the enemy to get into the water. They're going to have to approach us eventually in the water. We're going to make them approach us in the water, right? If they if they come across, you know, the bridge or something like that, we'll simply go further downstream and cross again. Uh, but this is the key to it. The horse archers are now in the water. And I want to take advantage of that. These archers are raining death in there. Horse archers are dangerous because they move fast. Well, if you can slow them down, either by getting in their way or blockading them with cav, or in this case, having their, their horses running through a marsh, uh, much easier to kill. And you can see the death spam reflects that, right? Even though we're hugely outnumbered here, it's a massacre. These guys are, you know, point blank being shot by 80. Actually, I guess we don't have that many Batanian Fiend Champs left. We've lost a lot. We probably have those 60 Batanian Fiend Champs in the army. I probably should have done a little bit closer look at what our army actually con consisted of. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, onward we move here. I'm going to conserve ammo a lot in these battles. Uh, even though the enemy is literally still amidst us here, this is like 20 cavalry. I don't want my guys firing 900 arrows at these cav when I can just come in here and kill seven, eight of them myself, right? We're going to prioritize threats. Now those horse archers over there, that's that's more of a threat. So for that, we can line up shield walls, attack them, and then light them up with fire, right? Well, again, they're charging or pulling back here. If they, if they pulled into us there, I would have definitely opened fire. The other thing you'll see me do is you'll see me use my crossbow very aggressive early on. Wipe out that Lord. Uh, it, very aggressive as far as ammunition use. My crossbow unit is the fourth core. There's, what, 44, 45 guys in there. Uh, those guys only have like 25 bolts each. And frankly, I don't mind if they're a little bit more wasteful with their bolts because I'm going to be using them later on in this battle. And my game is stalled out. Motherfucker. Well, at least it wasn't like an incredible battle so far. It was kind of early in the battle. But unless this releases here, uh, we will just start, o just start over. I don't know what that hesitation was all about. I apologize, folks. We're going to continue to try to play this episode. Uh, you know, like I said, I narrate all these lives, so this may just end up in the dustbin uh, of our videos. I don't know what's causing the stalling. I apologize. Normally my computer runs like glass. I have a very expensive PC. I mean, relative to, I guess, what a lot of people put together. Uh, this is about a $2,000 PC with a really high-end graphics card. Of course, we're running at 4K graphics here. All right, so we seem to have gotten through that little glitch. Their infantry is moving up here faster than I expected, but I have skirmishers. These guys are just ready to throw their javelins, 
right? They haven't really thrown many javelins yet. I've got archers, and we're going to pound this enemy when they're in the water like this. You see the guys trotting through this, this water. We had another episode, I think it was episode 7 of our, our, uh, our Spartan challenge here, uh, and we, we used water very successfully to decimate the incoming vanguard. So the horse archers still present a major threat. Their infantry is kind of coming up, but it's coming up slowly. So anytime I have a more obvious threat, die, motherfucker. Attack, attack the most obvious pressing threat, right? These 150 or whatever the fuck, huge amount of horse archers here shooting arrows at our guys from the side, from the back. Let's attack these guys. Let's get a cab unit on them. Chase them out of here. Kill a half dozen ourselves. Uh, and move on to the next phase. So I'm already thinking about kiting backwards here. Right, the enemy's kind of on this side of the river. That's suboptimal, right? I want the, the enemy in the water approaching us. So we're going to kite. Kiting is a, you know, an orderly measured retreat. Uh, a lot of times a, a real kiting, what you would be doing is shooting while you kite. To really properly kite, you need something like horse archers. Because a horse archer can retreat and shoot the whole time they're retreating, right? They're very effective at it. Uh, but in this case, we're just moving our units back. I do have two infantry units sort of holding uh, the rear guard here and shield the wall. Uh, and the hordes of enemies still continue to pour over the horizon. So 2,000 enemies. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to have a death, a, a kill rate of over 6 to 1, 7 to 1 to have any chance of success here. Uh, and unlike some of the other battles, this isn't the most stacked army we've had in this series. The other part I want to mention is this series, we will do multiple takes. In my campaign, save scumming is, I guess, the term. That's a new term for me. I'm an old guy. Uh, we just we would just say you reload your save game. There you go. They got 1,500 troops. <laughs> 1,570 against our 200 and something. So we're in for it, folks. They have 700 infantry, almost 800 infantry. All right, so here's your, here's your real Spartan challenge, right? The, like the Persians, we're fighting a massive force here. So I will take uh, multiple shots at these challenges. Um, I will try to tell you, you know, uh, if, if I only show one take and we're successful, uh, I may end up telling you at the end of the take, hey, you know, that was our fifth take or third take or whatever. And I'll try to basically, without wasting your time watching like really bad episodes, I'll, I'll try to tell you basically what I did wrong or what happened uh, when we failed the first few times. Uh, a lot of times, uh, I'm not going to tell you which one it is in the midst of it because I don't want you to know, hey, this was the, the one successful attempt. Uh, some people have expressed the desire and enjoyment that there's sort of suspense on the channel, that, that you as the viewer, you know, it's, it's like watching uh, kind of a, a drama or suspenseful movie. You can't be sure whether or not the Spartans in this case are going to win. Uh, and so I, I won't. I'll try not to tell you guys. I'll try not to spoil too much for, for people that enjoy that aspect of it. But we will try these uh, these these challenges multiple times. Uh, and again, if we fail, I'll try to be up front with that. So we've crossed the river here. You see what I've got going on here. I actually have crossbow on one side, uh, and I'm fine with that. Ordinarily, you wouldn't want your archers separated. But those guys, not only are they capable of shooting over there, they can go into a shield wall while we pound the enemy from the other side, right? We can kill the enemy here with this beautiful sunrise or whatever it is, try to push back their infantry. Um, I've got a line of infantry in the water there. Those guys are sort of the first line of defense. And then I have skirmishers behind them. You can see all the javelins flying in on the enemy. Meanwhile, the enemy, this is kind of what I wanted. They're sort of breaking in half because they are, they are acknowledging and concerned about the, the crossbowmen on the other side. And it is a bit of a checkmate move. If they don't attack our crossbow, I just have those guys light up the enemy in the back with, with bullets, right? Now they're getting attacked by horse archers, right? That The crossbow over there, into a shield wall they go, right? I've, I've discovered a lot more versatility with units uh, the longer I've played. There's a whole horse horde of peasants coming over here. Oh, they're trying to spread out archers on our flank. Fuck that. Uh, so I think we should probably kite back further. They've got archers kind of up there on that flank, up on that ridge. We're going to keep kiting. Uh, to finish the point, though, you, when you play the game as much as I have, and literally I've played more than most same people will play, you start to learn the versatility that your units have, right? Everybody thinks of crossbow, you just shoot, right? You shoot them, you have them shoot at the enemy, pull them back and have them shoot. 
Uh, and your infantry should just, you know, they should charge and your cavs should charge. There's so many more options once you sort of discover all the game uh, nuances, right? You can have your crossbowman shift into a, sh uh, a square and actually act as bait. Then you can have your skirmishers. You can divide your infantry units into a skirmisher unit so that you can have them throwing javelins. Uh, all I'm doing here is just sort of trying to press the enemy back while we kite. You want to have some deterrent for the enemy, otherwise they'll just keep chasing you at almost the same speed you're moving. You can see the death spam continues to be in our favor here. I got to get these crossbowmen across the river. Eventually, we're just going to have to go hand to hand with this huge force because we're going to run out of ammunition here. We're trying to spread archers up here. We'll spread out your fucking organs all over the ground here, you fucks. Got the Eighth Corps following me, so I've got those elite knights I mentioned earlier. You get a nice view of the battlefield there. Stretching the Fifth Corps up here. It's going to be time for hand-to-hand -hand here soon. Our units are almost out of ammo. But the point is, I wanted to finish that off. You have a lot of versatility with your units. You can use your, your cav defensively. You can use your your archers as infantry. You can. There's all kinds of different things you can do in Bannerlord. Uh, and hopefully my channel will really open some eyes to people. I've even had situations where I intentionally dismounted a bunch of cavalry because it leaves a bunch of horses in the way of the enemy. It really bottles the enemy up. And then you still have the men... Uh, after they jump off their horses, you can do things with them too, right? So it's like it's like uh, just thinking outside the box here. The enemy a vanguard is bearing down on us. Um, this this looks like battle royale is going to occur here. So a lot of times when battle is imminent, you'll see me drop down. I'm a lot more accurate with with, with my javelins on foot down here. It's a beautiful sunrise here for us to have a bloody battle. Um, we're doing more volleys of exchange of arrows. And my signal to charge here is basically when I stop seeing death. When my units that are at range stop killing the enemy, then I know we're out of ammunition and it's time to engage in hand in hand. I've got the 8th Corps. I've got the 4th now, the crossbow unit. I just put them into a square. For some fucking reason, there there's horse archers in their division. Uh, I noticed that in a previous episode. Um, we're just going to roll with it though. So on the right flank here, even though the enemy has a massive force, we're trying to spread out our 6th, 1st, and 8th to encircle the enemy. We've got a, a strong line there in the center. God, the enemy's moving really fast. I mean, maybe they're afraid of this axe. I guess I would run really fast too if I was getting my head cut off. It's time to attack though. The enemy's in a big fishball here. We're still raining down archer, archer damage on them. Uh, and in we go here. It's time to move up our units. They're in the water, that means they're gonna move slower. We've kind of got them hemmed in here. Of course, it's like hemming in uh, five brown bears, you know, with your three friends. I don't recommend it, uh, but in we go here. Look at how many, <laughs> look at how many there are. There must be like 1,500 right here. This is a situation where the old F1, F3 is totally appropriate, right? The enemy and I, uh, it's just straight blows now. I want every single unit attacking, charging. Uh, this is going to be a battle to the death. The enemy has so many troops here. There's just no way they're going to retreat. I see way more death than I want to see here. And, of course, look at the size of the force, right? I'm waiting in. Their archers are trying to spread out. Oh, shit. Pierce received 88 damage to the head. Somebody... Some noble or somebody got a really nasty shot off and dropped me. So, uh, this looks like a failure. I'm just going to autoplay this. My guys are actually doing a decent job here. 1,700. Let's see. Actually, they almost won. 13, 9. Okay. So, we did a decent job that, that first battle. Um, we ended up, you know, these, these handful of units, we're not going to play this out. Um, but I want to give this another try. Yeah, look how many archers they still have. They still have like a legion of archers. These guys aren't going to be able to overcome that. So we're going to give this another shot. Um, tactically, I think I made a few mistakes. I want to get across the river quicker. I want to conserve ammunition. And, of course, I want to not get shot in the face for 80, 88 hit points of damage, right? The, the Dumb and Dumber quote. Well, what if he, what if he shot you in the face, Harry? Y yeah, uh, what if he shot me in the face? And then the FBI agent's like, that was a risk we were willing to take, right? So, uh, you know, uh, my last few heroes here are going to get killed. Um, we're going to go ahead and give this another shot, 
and we will be right back in just a second. And that turned out to be a lot harder than I expected because what I didn't do is I didn't save my game right before the battle. So I had to try to recreate this battle effectively by trying to get these two armies to engage me and frustratingly they would not. They would keep the guy would keep running off, or the other army would decide, you know what, fuck that, we're gonna chase, we're gonna go uh, siege this this castle instead. Uh, bottom line, long story. Um, I'm only showing you just a couple of the frustrating attempts here in super fast forward, but I ended up trying like eight or nine times before I was able to actually make this work. Um, so I just kept reloading the game, reloading the game, uh, trying over and over again. I did this for over a half hour trying to get this scenario set up in the same manner. I mean, I'm striving for a level of authenticity with these battles, right? We're going to fight them over and over again, but I want basically the same scenario to occur each time. All right, welcome back. So we're going to give this another shot here. Uh, this little component of it's actually been a really big pain in the ass. Um, I didn't save my game right before the battle. I saved it like a couple days before. So I've actually, I'm trying to recreate the battle now. Uh, and I, to be perfectly honest, th this was this was painful. I, I basically went through this entire process like lightning speed. Of course, by this stage, I had done it 10 times because I just could not track down these same two armies. I, I could not get... Uh, these same two armies except one other time uh, and I'm not going to show you the episode because we got our asses kicked uh, I actually got my ass kicked very early on uh, I took major damage in a, in a scrum against some of their horse archers um, and of course once I went down very early on the attack dissolved so we're, we're giving this another shot um, I've actually been narrating now for about 45 minutes straight, so it's been kind of exhausting. I can't get this forced. I can't seem to make these guys attack at the same time like that first battle here. So uh, eventually, if I can't if I can't get them to attack, see, he's just like taking off. Don't run away, motherfucker. There he comes. If I can't get him to attack, I'm just going to fight the 1700, and we'll we'll give we'll have another have another attempt. Kind of the old. The old I, I've been giving it the old college try here to, to, to essentially replicate the battle. Um, I didn't, I'm not going to show the eight or nine times where I literally ran around in circles. Uh, sometimes this fuck here, this smaller force of 300, they would just roam off. Sometimes they would just like be d totally disinterested in attacking us. Uh, but it looks like they're closing in here. I want to reduce my troops down to, to 300. We picked up a bunch of these extra recruits. Um, wouldn't want to have an advantage on it, right, fellas? I mean, you know, 300 against 2,000. It, it, I don't I don't want this. I, I want to make sure this is a fair battle here, right? All right, so it looks like it's going to work. Yes, good. And it should be enough daylight, so this this should be... Uh, this will be another potential attempt for us here. Again, we've already failed twice. Uh, it's possible that this battle is just not winnable. Um, I have had an unwinnable battle so far in the series. I won't spoil it and tell you which one it is because like I said, I want this, the user to have some suspense. I want you to wonder whether or not we can actually achieve victory in such a ridiculous situation. So already looking around, I like this setup way better than the previous setup. Um, we have the potential to do a peekaboo ridge before we retreat across the river. Peekaboo Ridge, is, there's better military names for it. Uh, I'm just gonna configure my units here. I'm not really gonna explain what I'm doing for the ninth time. Uh, Peekaboo Ridge is basically where you have a sharp ridge or even a moderate ridge that the enemy has to come over to approach you. And what you do is you position your troops on the other side, you know, at the right distance. And of course, if you haven't ever done it before, you're gonna have to watch some of our videos on it. Um, you know, I've got something like a hundred videos now as part of the channel. A lot of them have a lot of very valuable information for for people who are just learning tactics. Uh, but the idea of the Peekaboo Ridge is essentially they have to come over the ridge, and when they do, they meet an absolutely withering, destructive archer fire uh, before they can set up, before they can attack, before they can close in on your units, right? Uh, you have a, a somewhat temporary but massive temporary advantage uh, where you can just pound their units. And in this case, of course, this is... You know, we know the horse archers are coming, right? It, one of the advantages of I have of, of playing this battle more than once is now I know what the enemy, uh, not necessarily their playbook, because the enemy acts a little differently every battle, uh, but I know what units they're going to have, right? I know they're going to have 200 and something horse archers, and we're going to prepare a nice little nasty trap for these fucks this time. 
Trying to spread out a couple cav units ahead here again to absorb some arrows. You see I've got the 5th Corps kind of at an angle, a little bit below that ridge there. We're going to have our two infantry units, the 1st and 6th at Shield Wall. It's another absolutely beautiful setting for a battle. And hopefully we can pull off this uh, extremely difficult challenge here. We are going to continue to keep pushing, pushing the bar, pushing the difficulty up on this. Win or lose here, we're going to try some even harder challenges uh, after this episode. Of course, at this stage, you're watching kind of one of the late. Yeah, they have 1,278 troops. Whoops, run into the rocks here. So they outnumber us over four to one uh, with that, with this new mod, modifying things. Uh, it would be three to one with standard vanilla. So there's their horse archers. Um, I will probably end up doing 20, maybe a few more of these 300 series because they've been pretty popular so far. Um, and, you know, uh, wh whatever you guys really are interested in, you guys just got to tell me. Like, I, I love playing the game as long as it's not, like, boring shit or you want me to do, like, smithing. <laughs> I'm not doing that. You guys can learn smithing from somebody else who's uh, done it a little bit more and maybe likes that shit. I, I did a little bit of smithing once. Very tedious. I won't, I won't be doing that again. We have crafted weapons. Look at these guys. They just totally ambushed themselves. So there's a tight ridge here. I just called my second and third cavalry and the eighth corps. I told them to follow me and I pointed the third corps at the ground right directly for them to go there because this is what I want. Look at this fucking traffic jam. They're being shot. They're on a ridge. They can't get away. I've got units all over them. Look at how fucking tight and bound up they are. They are going to get <laughs> massacred by archer fire. Look at that destructive archery fire. They are getting obliterated. I got to deal with this heavy cav here. These guys are trying to fucking charge our archers. Fucking assholes. I'd apologize for the swearing, you know, but we're going to be we're going to be cool about it. We'll keep it keep it lighthearted. I'm, I'm former military, uh, former fire service, actually current fire service. I'm a firefighter, almost 30 years in service. Uh, and we like a little fucking swearing here said it before though there won't be any racism you don't have to worry about me going on some kind of riff about fucking black people or chinese people or something like that i fucking despise racism uh, but we are going to do some swearing on these motherfuckers especially when they try to spear our archers come in here and do some major damage behead some of these insolent fucks oh shit i'm in trouble totally surrounded i gotta get out of here cut my way out Took a couple shots there, but not too bad. Their horse archers are in the water, though, highly vulnerable. Again, they can't move very fast in the water. This is right where we want them. And I'm already sending my crossbow across the water here. I'm, I'm reacting a lot faster than that first video. Uh, the second video, I, I got my crossbow across the water early, too. I just know they move slower. I'm keeping my infantry back here and countercharging with our cavalry because I don't want their cavalry riding down our troops as we're trying to retreat. These guys are totally vulnerable here in the water again. I mean, I am just not only are they being shot to pieces, you can hear the the horses dying and the horses being dismounted, but these guys are getting pounded. I just told our archers to stop moving. I don't want them to to kite. I actually want them to stand still and obliterate these fucks. Have a javelin, you motherfucker. It's still, it's still 180 horse, ar 180 horse archers. So we're going to continue to pull across here. I want my crossbow, the ones shooting first, like I said before. Uh, my archers, I'm being a lot more coy, a lot more careful with their ammunition, right? You see all these guys carrying this sword around. That means they're, they're in hold fire mode. But my crossbow, especially when their horse archers come up, I want those guys shooting their bullets. That's because later in the battle, I will be using them like infantry. They're actually fairly decent infantry. Anybody who's played Bannerlord and been face to face with the sharp sharpshooter, they block an, incre <laughs> an incredible amount of attacks. It's actually really irritating. Uh, I don't have a lot of sharpshooters, but I've got a bunch of different types of crossbow, and they all have a decent ability to fight. Uh, and critically, they're going to be basically supplementing our infantry right here. So they're they're playing two roles in this battle. Early on, they're shooting fucks off their horses. Later on, they'll be smashing people with their mace. Uh, 
uh, and, and forming a shield wall. So their horse archers again here are totally vulnerable. We're going to fly in here and decimate these fucks. Look at them, just in the water. They can barely move. Just plowing through them. I mean, I'm just literally, it's like a factory of destruction. They're just, they can't move, and of course I move faster than them. Look at these guys, these guys are totally bottled up. I need to get Cav right in here. This is going to be total destruction. Second Cav is following me, and these guys, look at how bottled up they are. They can't go anywhere. <laughs> Meanwhile, the enemy is staying back with their main force. Very bad decision. Uh, you hear me belabor the point in battles. You always want to use concentrated attacks on the enemy. Well, the enemy is basically... I guess the enemy hasn't subscribed to our channel here because they've got their infantry, vanguard, and the 900 archers or whatever the fuck they got sitting back, and they just watch their horse archers get mowed down. Maybe they're racist. Maybe the Southern Empire hates Kazait, and so they sent all their Kazait forces in sacrificial. What is that, Edward Longshanks and Braveheart, where he's like, not the archers, arrows cost money. Send in the, send in the Irish, the dead cost nothing, right? Maybe, maybe that's what the approach they're taking here. Whatever the reason, is a very bad strategy. We basically annihilated their horse archers. Is that, that is one of these fucking, their guys. Fuck you, get out of here. Okay, so they're starting to approach the water. We're going to be patient. I don't want to open fire until they look vulnerable and they're in the water. They've got a lot of shields over there. We'll see what kind of effect this volley has. Sometimes I'll just open up a volley just to see if the death spam looks okay. It's not bad. We're getting enough kills that I think we're going to leave it on. Plus, they're charging really aggressively. Anyways, the enemy didn't attack in detail, uh, or didn't attack in a concentrated manner. Very bad strategy. We are going to attack in, in concentrated effort. Right now I'm dragging cab units because I'm trying to push back this initial wave. Ah, I took a nasty spear there, fucking assholes. I have javelin cores there. The first infantry has some javelins, and the sixth, that's my elite javelins. So as these infantry cross, they're running into these infantry divisions. Now my first, I'm going to use as a square here, as a distractionary square. This, the fourth, here they go into shield wall. Remember what I was telling you earlier, these guys are going to be offensive troops. What I want here is that the fourth crossbow attacking the enemy while the enemy's sort of perplexed by this square. You see this square here? The enemy's not going to be able to do a lot to that. Meanwhile, I'm going to kite with the sixth. This is our skirmishers. Can I kind of help them get free here? And then I'm going to have these guys unleash hell with crossbows. Finally, we're going to attack with the fourth, and eventually we're going to attack with the sixth and the eighth on the enemy's left flank. So over here, our right flank, we're gonna come barreling in here with our sixth and eighth. I may stay on horse for a, a while here. When you're in the water, uh, it's very difficult to move around. It's hugely advantageous to be on horse if, when the enemy's in the water like this. See, I can, I'm still causing damage. It's charge damage, running guys over, knocking them on the ground. Uh, but I can just hammer guys relative safety. Because if you're in the water here, very quickly, there's like nine enemy all around you. They're beating you on the head with their scythes and their, their maces and whatnot. You're fucked. The enemy's regrouping. Well, that's also a very bad strategy. Once they came across the river, this was their Rubicon. They had to attack. Them retreating gives me confident, confidence that we can win this battle. It's not over yet, but I like what I see. I'm spreading my archers out here. I'm trying to get them a little bit of elevation. But these units on in the water, I want them charging. I'm going to do the opposite of what the enemy did. We're, we're coming to grips with the enemy here while they sort of fall back. When the enemy had us, like, swarmed all around us, they should have fought to the death there. And, of course, part of the reason I'm telling you that is because if you're learning from my channel, you, you need to learn, you need to know that kind of thing. If you are face-to-face -face with the enemy, and let, oh, shit, that's a lot of archers. I gotta be careful approaching that. I'm already at half health. If you're face to face with the enemy, uh, you don't retreat, right? Because if you retreat, the enemy's just gonna be pounding you in the back, hitting you with swords. Now you saw me do it briefly there with the sixth core. If you're paying attention, but those guys move very fast, and I supported them. There also wasn't a huge force on them. It was like ten guys. All right, so we're sparring at range here. 
we're letting the enemy still just kind of, I don't know what they're doing. A watery grave is what they're going to get. They're just kind of hanging out in this marsh. Partly they're perplexed because they just got destroyed. They approached us and got eviscerated. And, of course, they're getting shot at range. So just like a human opponent, they're very, uh, they have a lot of consternation about what to do now at this stage of the battle. Well, they might be confused about what's next, but I'm not. So we're getting low on ammunition. You saw me do it in the first battle. We are going to surround and fucking destroy this force. See how concentrated they're getting in here? I can fly in a little bit here, cause a little chaos. We are going to attack this force simultaneously. But we're not going to do it just head on, right? We're going to do it with flanks. So I've got my two divisions of shields there that can approach them from the front. And we're going to drag the 6th, 8th, and the 5th to the enemy's left. It's almost identical to what I did before. But I want to be able to surround the enemy. If you can get units on the side of the enemy, especially like where their archers are, you can do major damage to the enemy. Now, while my troops are moving up, I'm going to play aggressive. The 8th Corps and the 2nd Corps are moving with me here. I want these high-level knights intimidating the enemy, getting in here, knocking guys around, putting a big shield in their face. You see all these guys <laughs> swinging their battle axes, right? It's basically like 10 of my character, right? We all have 300 whole arm or two-handed or whatever good armor and we just want to do exactly what's happening we want this troop sort of freaked out kind of moving around trying to reform because we're getting our other units moved up to the side here so that we can flank these guys are trudging through the water right so what I'm trying to do is I'm basically trying to buy time for my troops again trying to slow these guys down they're shooting at our guys fucking like killing our battalion fiend champs Meanwhile, we just came to grips with their center. The first, sixth, and fourth, I told basically to charge their center and shield wall, right? That's uh, the military parlance for what we're doing is basically flanking. This is uh, uh, turning the enemy, turning the enemy's flank. Uh, we're coming astride the enemy. Choose your verbiage. But we're holding down the enemy's center while we get units in overloaded here on the side. Incidentally, this is also very, very similar to an oblique order where you overload one side of the formation destroy that side of the formation I just sent all these guys in you hear them roaring with their battle cry Rah! and now we're gonna just roll up the enemy's left that term basically means once these guys are dead we're gonna have our guys drive in on the enemy enemy center they're being eviscerated by our first and fifth corps or first and fourth corps and now these savages just barrel in on the sides here the enemy's just melting away it's all green screen. The enemy's fucking paralyzed. They're trying to retreat. My axe is ripping guys apart. Where did the enemy go? They literally just vaporized. Are there reinforcements or something? Was that it? Wow. We absolutely destroyed the enemy this battle. I mean, our guys are ready for another battle. Fuck yeah. That was a massacre. So it took three tries. Uh, it took a lot of uh, jostling just to get these battles to happen in the first place. Uh, but this is a resounding success. Uh, I haven't actually felt this good about one of these battles until this battle. This was 2,000 troops with a, a mod that makes it so that even more of their troops can be on the battlefield at the same time. Look at I got low level troops that survived. We don't even have our best army here. We just absolutely shoved that on the enemy. 179 troops left. Now, I try not to give away spoilers with the title, but if I was making a title for this, I would be like, it would be like pure domination. I mean, they didn't even rout. We killed 2,000 troops and we lost 100. So we got a beautiful sunset here to fucking congratulate our digital selves, pat ourselves on the back. Uh, but in all seriousness, hopefully you enjoyed this battle. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, then you enjoyed it a lot. That was a, a lot of fun tactical maneuvering there uh, and a very enjoyable destruction of a very large force. So as usual, I'm gonna release all these prisoners. It's on to the next battle for our 300. Uh, we don't need any looters, thanks. We will take these upgrades though. 
Right, so look at all these upgrades. It's because these units were low level going into battle. I have fucking recruits and whatnot in there, and we still mangled them. A lot of our 8th Corps survived. That was a massacre. All right, friends, you know we'll be back. There'll be harder challenges heading our way with probably even fucking bigger armies. So stay tuned. Please subscribe if you want to see more. Leave comments, all that good stuff. See you, friends, next time.